Three events are down, two events remain as we get closer to crowning a champion here at the 2023 Arnold Strawman Classic in Columbus, Ohio. The final day of competition for the men here, and we are glad you were with us. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet and Jerry Pritchett, and Kiki Dixon is the fourth member of our broadcast team, and we head into an event that is a total unknown for everybody. Yeah, this is the, the real lottery in this contest. So far, we've seen some incredible performances across day one and the start of day two. This is one, based on watching the women, seems to suit the taller athletes. So maybe Tom Stoltman can kind of pull back some points on this one. Yeah. Uh, Mateus, he has a chance here to get some points back if it, if, if it has seemed to suit the, the taller athletes better. But it's the wild card one. We don't know, you know, how, how it's going to go. And we don't know how the overall standings are going to shake out yet either. It is extremely close right now on top of the leaderboard. Trey Mitchell is still in front, but only by a half a point over Mitchell Hooper. And there's a good battle behind them for that final spot on the podium. Bobby Thompson, Mateusz Kieliszkowski, and Rob Kearney all separated by just two and a half points. Let's bring in the other member of our broadcast team, Kiki Dixon. Guys, I spoke with the athletes while they were warming up, and there was still a fair amount of uncertainty on what technique they were going to go after. Trey had initially told me he was going to be going for chest throws, but I saw him practicing overhead. Luke Stoltman said, hey, I think I'm going to try one of each, overhead, chest, and then maybe on my head. One of the few athletes who seemed to have a clear path on what he wants to attempt for this event was Mitch Hooper. In his research, he decided I'm going to be putting it on my head, and all three attempts should go that way. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. No surprise that Mitch Hooper is doing research, one of the smartest athletes in the field here. And again, he's only a half point out of first place. And we will go in reverse order of the overall standings. So our overall leaders, Mitch Hooper and Trey Mitchell, will be the last two athletes to go here. Each athlete will have three attempts. On that stone, it weighs 185 pounds. You have to throw it as far as you can, and your score is your best throw. Not cumulative distance, but your best throw. It's an unknown event, Laws, but the keys of the event are presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. What are you keeping an eye out for here? Well, we've got the women's event to look back on, and we've got a little bit of um, information based off that. Being a good athlete seems to help, having tall, rangy levers, creating good speed on that run-up, and just making sure your trajectory is correct as you release that stone, trying to force it as far as possible. Kevin Ferris is going to be the first man up. And definitely that overhead position seemed to be the best and then the girl to go to for all the athletes. And the biggest key, it seems to be, is how fast that run-up is to, to create that momentum. And with, with getting as close to that line as possible. That's the key, is timing the run-up so you, you kind of get that front foot planted just before. Now Kevin's got a little different here. Looks like he's going to kind of throw it using his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting technique. I think he got much out of that. Huh? Kind of almost ended up just shot-putting it with one arm yeah, rather than getting both arms into it. Too heavy with per and with three attempts, and it is your best throw, you do have a little bit of time to sort of figure this thing out. Yeah. But that was uh, the first time we've seen someone open with that technique. Most of the time we're seeing people go with the overhead throw. And we'll await the distance on Kevin Ferris. And again, it's where it makes contact, not where it ends. Because he's holding at the side that you really can't create any speed as you run up. Yeah, it really makes that run-up difficult, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, we, this is a big, heavy stone. It's not a shot put. No, it, it, it's huge. You kind of 180 pounds off, off the one hand. It's yeah. From, from from what I've seen, from what Jerry and myself have picked up on, having that stone pressed out overhead, having your release point as high as possible, creating speed as you approach that line, they seem to be the the key factors for success on this one. And also being tall. Yeah. Height is an advantage in this event. And Luke Stoltman will be up next. You got to figure laws. The Stoltmans with the, the history of Scotland, and they got to probably pride themselves on the stone events. This has got to be one they want to do well on. Yeah, very much so. But this is a very different type of stone than oh, they yeah. used to. Stoltman's best finish, the sixth place in the Wheel of Pain to start the competition. He pushed it 82 feet, three inches. 
And he has that 185 pound stone on his head. head now. First athlete we've seen use this approach, and that looked good. Oh, that was a good launch. Very good approach there by Luke Stoltman. That was allowing him to engage that tricep and shoulder power. And the release point was good as well. He's just going to have to cope with um, a sore head. That ball spot on his head now. But <laughs> it's going to be worse as the day goes on. <laughs> a little callous up there by tomorrow. And now we'll see how many people copy that. Because that clearly was effective for Luke Stoltman. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't see any of our ladies use that technique earlier on. We've heard that Mitch Hooper is going to use that approach. And obviously the athletes have been talking backstage. I think the, the ladies were a little smarter than to use their head. <laughs> it's why they outlive us. It is, yeah. <laughs> they might not outlift, but they, they definitely outlive. I tell you what, Luke released quite far back there. Yeah, so he, he gave he up potentially really a lot of. Well, you look where he wound up and his feet I were did hop, though, right so. there. You cannot touch any part of that sand pit. Now, here comes Pablo Nakanechny. Now, he's got a, a, a knee that's bothered him from that deadlift, possibly from yesterday, from that log, but it carried over in the day. Yeah, we Cut weren't sure if it was like hamstring or quad, but apparently it's a knee issue that he's, a patellar issue that yeah. he's suffering with, particularly after the log yesterday. And really one of the bigger surprises that we've seen in this entire competition, he came into the elephant bar deadlift as maybe a favorite to win the whole thing and failed to put up a good lift, finished 10th, and didn't get any points. Yeah. yeah. It's just hard, you know, if, if he really strained that knee yesterday on the log to try to push on it on deadlift. I've just been curious on how his warm-ups were going in deadlift that, he ended up trying to do such a high you opener. Sure, you surely think, okay, I'm not feeling it today. I've got to put a safe lift in. Yeah, I thought he would have backed off the opener, but. He's still, I mean, let's remember he is the youngest athlete competing, still lacking experience. And it looks like that's going that, to be the new mark. That was just a tricep extension. He's just strong. He's so strong. <laughs> still Limping favoring away that right leg a little bit, but he's going to have the new top mark. Is the prior top mark was from. Luke Stoltman at nine feet two inches. Pablo's going to beat that. We've seen some incredible athletes over the years that just decide just being strong is enough. And sometimes it is. Take another look at Pablo's first throw. So really couldn't create any speed on the run-up, but plenty of power. Yeah, just, just pressed it out there. First of three rounds here and the fourth of five events here at the 2023 Arnold Strawman Classic is Tom Stoltman, seventh place overall coming into this event. We'll get ready for his first throw. Now this is a man you look at and you think, this is an event built for him. You know, he's got that tremendous wingspan. He's extremely tall, he's powerful. It's not been the best competition for Tom, but he's got a chance here to really pick up some points. And 10 feet, two inches is now. Look how high up that stone is. Oh, and that's a big throw. Wow. Await the official measurement. And it does not look like it's going to best Nakanetsi's oh, no. mark, but it is going to be probably second. And if you want to know why height is an advantage, I mean, just <laughs> look at the launch point from Tom Stoltman, and, and he threw yeah, I from think pretty he, far back as well. Did, yeah. I think he'd be better off just trying to plant that front foot as he releases, yeah. rather than that little hop at the end. Tom he Evans. Generate a bit more power then. Be up next, and he's had a really solid competition for his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Sixth place overall, 13 and a half points. His best finish was in the Austrian Oak. This might be a good fifth. event for him, too. He's, he's athletic. He comes from a football background. I've been super impressed with Tom. You know, he's he's really yeah. made a great showing in his first big pro show. Yeah. You know, he's come from the amateur scene. Now he's stepping in with the best in the world. 
and he's really holding his own. A former offensive lineman from the University of Richmond. His grandfather also played in the NFL, played two seasons with the New York Giants back in the 60s. That's oh, and that's going to be strong. really close. That was a good throw. He's pleased with that one. From the angle we saw, it looked very close to where Pablo Nakanechny's first throw wound up. Is the official distance. Not sure if they move the leader mark, but this will give us a much better view of it. That yeah, black is mark on the E and the sandpit, that's the leader. I that think he got probably that. did beat it. It's, that looks like it. That looked like a great throw there. Now Rob Kearney's going to be the next man up as Tom Evans is now in first place with a throw of 10 feet 4 inches. Just talking to Rob backstage, he's, he's done amazingly well in this contest. Great to see him lifting so well, but he's very nervous about this one. One of the shorter athletes competing. And also coming back from that tricep tear that he suffered, can't really rely on that explosive power that maybe some of the other athletes will be able to. Kearney will be the sixth man to throw, fifth place overall. Best finish was in the last event, the Elephant Bar deadlift, where he took third after a 961-pound lift. 185-pound stone. Not a bad effort for Rob Kearney. Bad throw. Solid throw. Hey, he gives up so much height compared to Tom Stolman, and, and like Laws said, you know, the tricep injury. But still good toss. Yeah. We've seen two men so far eclipse the 10 foot mark, and Pablo Nakaneshi and Tom Evans, as we'll show you in another look at Rob Kearney on his first attempt. So we've got nice and close to the board. Really trying to drive forward as hard as he can. If any part of your body touches that sand pit, your throw does not count. And now Mateusz Kieliszkowski will be up next. He's fourth place overall, 17 and a half points. He's in that battle with Kearney and Thompson for a spot on the podium. He trained us a lot with a lot of different stones. So it'll be interesting how he takes to this stone and this setup. He's always been good at stones at the Arnolds, the various different types of stones that they've been challenged with. Completely different when it's a stone like this. But yeah, if you've seen his training, he's yeah. been working on different techniques, different implements. He's definitely been working hard at his throwing. 10 feet, four inches from Tom Evans right now, your top mark. First of three rounds. Here goes Mateusz Kuliskowski. Oh, that's going to be very close. He's having a good look at that, wants to see where it is. Now, he did more of that one foot plant and yeah. throw. He did have to kind of that is gonna be stutter step a little bit. Well ahead of. Still launched it. Evans Mark. In the first look, we had a look close. Second look at. Absolutely looks like Kieliszkowski was able to beat that. He wants to know the distance. Yeah, Both athletes know. have been walking away, and he's looking at checking, and now he's happy. He knows. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the first time all weekend he gave a kind of a smirk and a, a nod yeah. that he was actually happy with a yeah, performance. Yeah. Hey, look at that. He's happy. He's happy. You can see signs that Kieliszkowski is really coming back. Some things not quite where they need to be. It shows this, you know, because he, he put out, you know, some YouTube that how much work he was putting into this, and, and it shows. Kieliszkowski is going to be your new leader at 10 feet 7 inches as Bobby Thompson, currently in third place. 
will make his first of three attempts. He has 19 and a half points. And judging by the fact that he's wearing the hat, I'm guessing this thing's going to come off the head. I think it's potentially a good tactic for him. It'll allow him to engage those strong shoulders and triceps. There we go. That wasn't a bad throw as well. Throw. That should be enough to get him in the top five at least. Good throw. Two athletes remaining before we close out the first of these three rounds. Mitchell Hooper and then Trey Mitchell. The rest of these guys are they're, they're pushing Hooper and Trey to have to have to have good throws if they went up in the points. Hooper and Trey Mitchell are in a unique position where the battle between each other is more important than where they place yeah. against everyone else. See Bobby Thompson's first throw. And but they can't get away from each other. No. They, they if, have if, to be. If one did well and one did badly, it's all over. It's over, yeah. So they, they can't let too many of these guys come between them. And there's a lot of good scores up there. Yeah. Mitch Hooper just a half point behind Trey Mitchell for the overall all lead here. And the pressure is. Look at that. He's marking out where he need, feels yeah, he needs to be. As you mentioned, he's just a smart athlete. It's the first time we've seen anybody put a visual marker down as to where he wants to stop. Mitch is a really smart athlete. He thinks about everything, tries to come up with a plan. And he's, he's also got the ability to adapt as well when needed. Also wearing a hat, so he's going to go off to the head as well. Let's see how Mitch Hooper's first throw goes. Mitch Hooper. It's going to be a good throw for Hooper. And as you mentioned, Laws, the real focus for him has to be just beating Trey Mitchell here. Mitch's tactic coming into this contest is knowing he doesn't really have a big weakness. So it's all about every single event scoring big points. And that will be his goal on this one here. If he finishes top four, top three, he's going to be over the moon. quite enough to go into the lead, but it looks like a solid first throw. Trey Mitchell will be the last man to throw, and the pressure is on him because the frame carry is the last event. The last year, Trey finished dead last in that event here. He only moved at 1.2 inches. Yeah, no, he, he needs a, a good performance here to get as many points as he can going in that frame. I think the frame's going to be better for him this year, but it's still not going to be a standout event. So Mitch Hooper's only in sixth place there with 9.3, so that will be Trey Mitchell's target. He's not going to worry about Kiliszkowski, Thomas Evans. He's going to be looking at getting as close or ahead of Mitchell Hooper. You know, Ideally for Trey, he needs to be in the lead going into the, yeah. the, the frame. Well, you know, and as good a throw as Bobby got, he's got that kind of power yeah. to get it. Right, the overhead. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Hard to tell from that angle. Solid. And that will close out round number one. We'll await the measurement on Trey Mitchell's throw. A lot of these athletes very close on that first throw. Yeah. Now it's all going to come down to what they've learned from that first attempt. Do we see changes in technique? Do athletes just stick with the plan? Let's see from the side how this was. Oh, hard to tell how close that was to some of the guys. With one round down, let's take another look at the overall standings coming into the event. Trey Mitchell with that half point lead over Mitchell Hooper. And then Thompson, Kieliszkowski, and Kearney 
fighting for third. The three of them separated by just two and a half points. Tom Evans right now sits in sixth place and so far having a very solid event four. Kevin Ferris. See if Kevin changes out it up some. For round two here. Yeah, I think he needs to. I'm not sure that kind of that pushing off one arm. I don't think that would work too effective. well. Kevin's athletic enough and strong enough to get that overhead and, and get a good fast run up, launch it. There we go. Now I'm still kind of that side position. Same kind of technique that he employed Got for his first cross, throw. But so the interesting thing there is Trey Mitchell is in eighth place currently, 8.8. Mitch Hooper is two places above him after the first throw. Both lower than they'd want to be compared to the other athletes, but really the battle is between those two. Kevin Ferris's second throw. Yeah, you know, it really could change a few things going into frame if, if some of these guys that were at the bottom end take away those big points from those guys. Yeah. I mean, so they really can't gain any ground away from each other, you know. And Kevin Ferris fails to improve. He's six feet five inches on that. We've seen so many toss. twists and turns in these contests. Yeah. It's been exciting to watch. Nothing is guaranteed. Luke Stoltman, currently seventh in this event. First throw of nine feet two inches. I tell you what's impressive about that first round is Pavlo Nekonechny, who could barely walk to the, yeah. the platform, just blasted that. Did like a tricep extension yeah. throw out there. So Luke is sticking with on the head. Looked a little more clumsy as he approached there, but still good power into the throw. Yeah. So important to get that timing right and the, 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 the steps approaching the marker. Yeah. Well, you can keep the momentum going. Those stutter steps, just, they take too much of your momentum away. Nine feet, two inches was Luke Stoltman's prior mark. This is his second attempt. And really started throwing about know, three feet short yeah. of where he needed to be, but He's still stopping very close. Yeah. He's almost requiring himself to, to throw early to stop himself going into the, yeah. the sandpit. Luke will stay right where he is. Another throw of nine feet, two inches. Now Pablo Nakanechny, his first throw is 10 feet, two inches. He's got that right leg that he either made worse and the deadlift or outright just injured in the deadlift, but was able to deal with it pretty well on his first attempt. I keep thinking with this guy, the potential is just unreal. You know, to, to be able to have thrown 10 feet, two inches without generating any speed from the run-up, and he zeroed what really should have been his best event, his banker event. When he gets it right, he's going to shock everyone. Just still that inexperience costing him a little bit in contest right now. Here goes Pablo. That's 185 pounds. He's just casually holding in front of his head. Not going to beat Kieloskowski's mark. It may keep him in third place. He's not sure it's going to be enough to beat Evans as well. I think if that knee was helping, he could get a, a faster run up. He could probably really launch that. Nakanechi's second attempt. He's 25 years old. He's got such a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, he really does. The size and strength that he has. He's just got to clean up a few events. The 10 feet 2 inches is still Nakanechi's best throw. He'll stay in third place. Tom Stoltman. 
nine feet six inches on his first toss. Tom is going to want to get into the 10 foot mark. Bobby Thompson doing very well to, to be in the top four on this. Really well. Thomas Evans, that was a brilliant first throw by him. Here goes Tom Saltman. Yeah. Quite get the power to go forwards then. It kind of just went straight up and came down fast. Kind of lobbed it. measure to where the stone initially made impact. The leader mark on the bottom of your screen. That's where Mateusz Kieliszkowski's stone landed. He is still your leader here in round number two. I'm going very, very close to that board. He was, that's about as close as you can get without. Yeah incurring a foul and now it's Tom Evans who's in second place after his first throw. Ten feet four and a half inches. Thirteen and a half points coming in. Looking to get himself inside the top five going into the frame carry this evening. Yeah, showing that on that shows on that first throw, his athletic ability from the football background, it really, really paid off. Had good speed on the run up, and explosiveness to throw it. Oh! Oh, and he oh, ends up touching guy. the sand pit. Oh. He tried to save it. Man. Again, though, you know, in second place, you go for it. Oh yeah, he's got a, and he still has another throw here. Absolutely, yeah, he's got another chance at it. I know when I, I messed Ooh. around with this just training, I think 50% of the time I went over the line. It's, hard, it's really hard. This you time. can see distance-wise, that is just ahead of where Kieliszkowski's throw was, but unfortunately, it's not going to count. But Evans certainly has the technique down here to possibly win the event. And if that if that were to happen, this leaderboard might get thrown into a blender a little bit. Yeah. Oh, if, if yeah. he could win this event, if if those uh, guys in the in the bottom of the lineup can take a big points away. Just, oh. just couldn't get there. <laughs> oh. Even stopped kind of back within that. Just that momentum. He had so yeah. much momentum. And these are big men we're talking about. You know, when you're 300 plus pounds, and he's probably closer to 360, 370. They do not stop on a dime very easily when gaining forward momentum. Now Rob Kearney will be up next. Kearney currently fifth place overall, ninth place right now in the event. His first throw, seven feet, seven and a half inches. He is only two and a half points back of Bobby Thompson for third place overall. Second attempt for Rob Kearney. Measurement to see if Rob Kearney improves on his initial throw of seven feet seven and a half inches. It's kind of a damage control event here for Rob, as you mentioned earlier. A little worried about this event coming in. Yeah. But well, unfortunately, like these last two aren't potentially great events for Rob right. because with frame carry as well, grip's been an issue in the past. So. Pretty good technique, but it's the height now that's making the difference for yeah. Rob Kearney. And we mentioned the frame carry for Trey Mitchell, and Jerry, you just brought it up, but 
And last year, he was only able to move it eight feet, seven inches. He finished eighth out of nine athletes in that event. Yep. He finished it at the, the Shaw Classic back in August, but it took him probably five or six picks to finally finish it. I mean, and you know yourself on this ramp, if you put that frame down, it's so hard. It's very difficult, and you, you might get one or two picks, and after that, your posterior just won't take anymore. Mateusz Kurlaskowski is up next for his second throw. He is your leader after throwing that stone 10 feet 7 inches on his first attempt. Tall, rangy, explosive athlete. That's another wow. decent throw there. Wow. And I think that's going to improve. And I'll tell you what, I love the way he's going to it down. Every time he's looking to see how far that stone's gone. He wants to know right now. Yeah. From that angle, it looks like he's going to be ahead of his last mark, and it, he will be, as you're going to see. There we go. He's just moving moving up. inching up the leader mark. So Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who comes in in fourth place overall, is leading this event. And the man who is in second place, Tom Evans, is in sixth place overall. Well, we knew this was a wild card event going into it. You know, we didn't, we could guess on who might be good at it, but we really don't know until we, we get into it. Well, we do know that height matters, and yeah. Mateusz Kieliszkowski is one of the tallest athletes here in the field. The trajectory is good, though, as well. He's getting all of that force. But he doesn't waste forward. any of that, that runoff. He's right at the board on the one foot, getting as much reach as he can. Clearly well prepared on this event. Yeah. 11 feet. In even for Mateusz Kieliszkowski. And now here comes Bobby Thompson. Bobby Thompson only has a two-point lead on Kieliszkowski in the overall standings. This will be his second attempt, his first throw nine feet, seven inches. Bobby, other than that wheel of pain, has had a fantastic performance at this year's contest. Taking the win on the deadlift, second place on the log. Well, this Currently is, in fourth, I believe, on this event. And this is where you think back to that one rep on the log that didn't count. Yeah. What if yep. he had gotten that? He's in a much more comfortable position in the overall standings, but now he has to focus on the stone wow. toss, and that is Good a great throw. throw for Bobby Thompson. Thumbs Good up throw. from the referee. Bobby means business. Bobby's even going to stick around and see what this one is. Yeah. That's uh, a good throw. Uh, Can he improve on his first round throw? That had to be an improvement. Looks like it could be in the 10, maybe close to the 10 foot range. <laughs> Trying just not to surrender too many points to Mateusz Kieliszkowski for that third place in the overall standings. He certainly had it dialed in there. Such strength in those shoulders and triceps, utilizing them well. And here comes Mitchell Hooper, second place overall. The Bobby Thompson just missing 10 feet, 9 feet, 11 inches on that last throw. So progressing from his first throw, though. Now fourth place overall in this event. Mitchell Hooper giving himself a mark and now moving back to the stone. No hat this time. No hat. We're going to see a change of technique. Nine feet three inches, his first throw. Well, he's a little further back than I originally thought he would be. I figured he'd be in the top three on this right now. But... Here goes Mitchell Hooper. That looked like a better oh, throw. That was a that much good. better throw for Mitchell Hooper. Really got that power into the stone that time. Trajectory was better. Just to make sure that... It's not far off the leader yeah. mark there. He might be inside the top four. That could be very close to Bobby Thompson's mark of 9 feet 11 inches. He looks happy. Let's go. 
Here's the second attempt for Mitch Hooper. That was a great throw. Yeah, the fantastic really good. throw. That's going to build the confidence for him. And, and with putting that, that extra pressure onto Trey Mitchell. He has now moved into second place, 10 feet, wow, 5 that's, inches. That's big. That's big for Mitch Hooper. And now huge amount of pressure on Trey Mitchell. He really can't afford to slip too far behind. He's got to have a good throw here. He only We've has seen him a... respond time and time again. Mitch Hooper has put the pressure on, but Trey, we saw it on the, you know, every single event. We've seen it at the Rogue Invitational. He just improves all the time. The log lift yesterday. And oh, he the, knows how to fight. Think back to that 941 pound lift that he put up in the Alpha Bar, and that was a absolutely. battle. And now he's got to come up with a huge performance. This Only needs a to half be the best point throw he's ever done. On Mitch Hooper coming into this event. So he's got to stay close to Hooper. Five people between them currently. He needs to improve on his first round throw. We have one round remaining. Trey Mitchell on his second attempt. Not sure if he improves on the first one. Yeah, I don't know if that was any better. But it looked to be a little more forward than up on that initial launch point. Yeah, I think it was maybe a better position going from the, the head position to the straight up. Um, but I don't think he gained much more out of it. Eight feet, eight inches is still going to be Trey Mitchell's top throw, and he is in eighth place right now in this event. Now we are in the third and final round, which means Kevin Ferris will be back out for his final throw. And Ferris choosing to go with some headgear. Six feet, nine inches, his best mark through two rounds. He was going to change it up. Trying to find a good balance point before he starts his approach. He's going off the head this time. Uh, and he over. winds up touching the sand pit, so that attempt will not count. And it uh, looked like it may have been his best one. Tried to give it a little more. I think it was definitely the furthest, but unfortunately for Kevin, the risk didn't pay off. Six feet nine inches is going to be what he ends up with. And that will bring out the Luke Stoltman. Watch Kevin Ferris's feet and they oh, yeah. Yeah. and his hand to that catch his balance. Down there. That's <laughs> that is not allowed, unfortunately. And Luke Stoltman is set for his third and final attempt. Currently sits in seventh place after his best throw of nine feet two inches. who wins the Battle of the Brothers is both Luke and Tom right next to each other in the standings as far as this event is concerned, separated by just four inches. Yeah, they're really close. Luke's head looks like some decent throws. It's just not, it's not getting the same distance as uh, some of the others. See if Luke Stolman is able to catch his brother, who will be coming up here in a little bit. Pablo Nakanechny will be the next man. Then Tom Stoltman will be out. So hard sometimes when a competition doesn't go 
how you kind of plan in your head and you kind of you end up disappointing on your strongest events. When you're not in that battle to, to challenge for the podium, sometimes you just kind of lose that motivation to keep fighting. He's putting on a professional performance, but you can see in his face, you know, last year he was battling for third and every event meant yeah. something, whereas now he's kind of like, he's probably thinking about the next contest, believe it or not, you know, even though he's still here battling, it's, it's slipped away from him. That log lift would have been disappointing. Well, Luke is unable to improve on his score. And here comes Pavlo Nakanechny in fourth place, 10 feet, two inches. If he can just get a little more distance out of that, he can put himself in second place. I have to go back to, you know, with Pavlo, I'd be interested to know what was going on backstage before the deadlift, because if the knee genuinely was bad, yeah. the smart thing to do would have been a safer deadlift. Get one on the board. Get five, six, seven points out of the deadlift rather than try and just win it with the first lift. Yeah. And he'd be in a position now where he's really challenging. Final throw for Nakanechny. I mean, he's doing exceptionally well on this. Yeah. Like, every single throw has been solid. He throws this thing like a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Could probably palm it. Sometimes it's not about being stronger. Sometimes it's about getting better at the sport and understanding how to structure a whole competition. He's got all the potential in the world, and I expect to see him winning major shows in the future. This is his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. This is his last throw in event four. Like, that was close. Good throw. Yeah, another good, solid yeah. throw. He generates so much power from his shoulders just to launch it because his run-up is really slow and just yeah. a, it's all just a, a push press out there. Tom Stoltman, nine feet six inches as Pablo Nakanechny is now in third place in the event. 10 feet, four inches. He's tied with Tom Evans, who has yet to make his third and final attempt. Tom Solman, seventh place overall. Best finish, two-fifths on day number one. The fifth in the Wheel of Pain, and then a fifth place in the Austrian Oak. third and final throw. That was a good, powerful throw. He's just lacking a little bit of speed on the run-up. Yeah. The actual throw was A little bit in the second throw, though. Yeah. May have progressed a little from his, from his first two attempts. Yeah. Nine feet, six inches is his best throw to this point. And we'll await the measurement on that. I think some of the angles always make it look Closer than you think. Yeah. You'll we'll wait for the official results. It's really hard to tell. Is that enough to move Tom up the leaderboard? Oh. We've a foot shy of Kuliskowski's top throw. But we'll await that measurement for Tom Stoltman. And now we move on to Tom Evans. Now, Tom's second throw was very, very big. It just went over the line. Needs to try and get it right, but he's got a chance. And that yeah. throw would have been the top mark because it was clearly past Kieliszkowski's. Yeah, he's point. definitely more capable of doing it. He just got to stop himself. 11 feet is the best throw so far. This is the final attempt for Tom Evans, who's right now tied with Nakanetsi for third. Final attempt for Evans. Let's see if he keeps it clean here. Oh, oh. <laughs> didn't get to see the, the impact screen. point, we but have... no question, he did not touch the, the sand stone, pit. Stone's gone a far distance. It's out of screen. It's not sure on the landing point. A 
Smith. Let's take a look at the replay here and see where this thing landed. If it was close to that 11 foot mark. Oh, oh that oh, man was, that, that was is right really, there. That was That's going to be very close. That looks like it's there. Shaking his head, but. 10 feet, seven inches puts him Ooh. in second place. Wow. And I'll tell you what, if, if it stays like that, that's really good news for Kiliuszkowski. To have Thomas Evans between the rest of the athletes, it's going to allow him to get back into a real good position to get on that podium. Well, Mateusz was only two points back of Bobby Thompson for third place. And now here comes Rob Kearney. Rob Kearney right now ninth in the event, eight feet one inch, his best throw. You see there as he was throwing, that stone was just dropping lower yeah. and lower. Well, you wonder too, if not for the triceps injury, if he might be going for a little bit of a different technique that might just be compensating yeah. for that, not well, putting pressure to get in a, on it. In a position where it's not completely loading right, that right. tricep too bad. I mean, I mean, obviously he wants to get a good performance here, but he doesn't want to re-injure that tricep either. He's no, this isn't an event he's going to win. Well, next man up will be your current leader, Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who has the best mark at 11 feet. Kearney's going to stay in ninth place, does not improve on his best throw, so he will wind up with a distance of eight feet, one inch. Teos Kirlaskowski, who is making his first appearance in a competition in nearly two years. And for him, just getting through this thing cleanly, all five events, has got to be a big confidence booster for him. Yeah, unless, you know, we should point out that if it stays as it is, this will be his second win of this competition. With potentially his best event still to come. He can end up taking three wins in his first contest back. Wow. And that's going to be really close. Throw as well. Yeah, we, I guess we can't say it too much. We've been saying it all weekend, and it's been changing. We said, oh. you know, Luke, Luke was the favorite on log. Yeah. Pablo was the favorite on log. There's on, no on, favorites Luke. anymore. So I think we, we, won't, we won't curse him and say he's the favorite <laughs> on, on frame. But when you look at the past results, oh, he's, he's, you know, he's a clear that's all we're doing yeah. when we're kind of, we're, we're basing it not off myths. <laughs> you know, no, know. He's, these he's are the clear. things that people have done in the past. But obviously, it doesn't mean it's going to play out like that. But to see him back winning events at the Arnold Classic, it's just good to see him back, especially as a Strongman fan. Having yeah. Mateus involved, it makes it exciting. And oh. hopefully he goes away from this, lets that confidence build, and we'll see more of him in the future. Kiliskoski is able to add to that total 11 feet 4 inches is now the best mark. So he does beat his prior distance as Bobby Thompson is set for his third and final attempt. Bobby Thompson been super impressive this weekend. Really working hard at his weaknesses. This type of event would not have suited Bobby no. in the past. Yeah, this is a, a surprise on how well Bob, Bobby's doing on this. On to the head. 11 is his best throw so far. Good foot speed. Comes up from the referee. I'm not sure he's going to move up at all, but it was a good, solid final throw. Thompson just trying to stay 
within striking distance of a spot on the podium here. And judging by his reaction, I don't know if he was able to improve on his second throw. I think Bobby's got to be very pleased with this. Two men left, Mitchell Hooper and Trey Mitchell. 10 feet 5 inches is Hooper's best throw. So really, the pressure is all on Trey Mitchell right now. Yeah. yeah Trey has got to better that throw to get some more points. Mitch is where he needs to be. Top three, that is the goal. Trey Mitchell in eighth place. Really needs to try and maybe overtake the Stoltmans, overtake Bobby Thompson, and narrow that gap as much as he can. Yeah. Yeah. He can at least overtake the Stoltmans. At least narrow it up some. And Mitch could add even more pressure here with this final throw. I think to try to get Bobby would be be pretty big ask at this point. Here goes Mitch Hooper. Can he improve on 10 foot five? I don't know if that's going to be it, but so should stay inside the top three and looks to be the overall leader going into the final event. Hooper has yet to finish lower than third in any event. He's got a third and two seconds. We spoke about it at the start of the show, how consistency is so important in strongman. You don't need to be the best at anything, but we've seen so many athletes take points off each other. As long as you can cons consistently get those third, second, fourth place finishes, you're always going to put yourself in contention come the end of the day. Well, Trey Mitchell has some work to do here. Eighth place right now in the event. Eight feet, eight inches is his best throw. And he's got to come up with a really big effort to do some damage control as far as surrendering points to Mitchell Hooper is concerned. You know, until this point, Trey has not put a foot wrong. Incredible performance on every single event. Day one, he only dropped one point. He's going to try something different. He laid down a marker as well. See if it may help him on his timing, nowhere, knowing where to plant his foot. He's got to try something here. I right, got to do everything he can here. This has got to be a better throw. Goes on the head. Cool, Trey. It looks solid. Looks like it might have been better than it was. I don't know if it's enough to gain any ground, but. It's a frustrating event to watch a, a little bit, this one. It's, it's yeah. Hard to... well, you don't get that immediate, you know. Yeah. Even the athletes what, what are there the performance looking, was. waiting. Yeah. Trey just seeing if he's improved at all on that second attempt. Every spot's going to matter right now for Trey Mitchell. Because again, the frame is okay. not his best event. Might a little bit better. Give a little nod there, maybe. Here is one more look at Mitchell's final attempt. And it looks like he even put a mark down for himself. Here are your event results. For the Steintossen, Kalos Koski, 11 feet, four and a half inches, will pick up his second event win. Tom Evans, his best finish so far of the competition. He takes second, Mitchell Hooper takes third, and Pablo Nakanechny is fourth. But Mateusz Kalos Koski from the start, very clear, uh, this was going to be his event to lose. And that third and final toss of his wound up being his best. Mateusz Kaliskowski, two event wins, moving up the overall standings, and he is with Kiki Dixon. Mateusz, congratulations on your second event win here at the Arnold Strongman Classic.
With this event, you had three attempts. How much were you able to learn between each attempt? Oh, I'm really happy because I won this event. I, I never, I didn't suppose before because no one know this event, and uh, it's hard to say predict. But uh, the best is if you beat by, by yourself your record. If you winning, you have more motivation to doing more. Uh, this is my method. We have one more event to go. You are the world record holder for the timber carry. Where's your confidence at going into this final event? If everything will be correct in my mind and I will start perfectly like my, my training, of course I won't beat this record today. Congratulations, thank you so much. Thank you. Second event win for Mateusz Kierlaskowski moves him into third place overall, but he is far from safe as Bobby Thompson is only two points back of him. Tom Evans is now in the top five and Mitchell Hooper has a four and a half point lead over Trey Mitchell heading into that frame carry. And Mitchell Hooper is with Kiki Dixon. Mitch, in your rookie season, you just took the overall lead with one more event to go for the Arnold Strongman Classic. What are you doing to mitigate those emotions that are going on as you compete through these events? There's not a whole lot of emotion, to be honest. I'm, I'm happy to be here, but I don't get overly nervous or anything like that. And my biggest emotion is that my head's a bit sore at the moment. But in that event, you just try and throw the stone to infinity and beyond and see how you go. You do come across as a very confident competitor. Where do you dig to get that confidence from? Or what experiences do you draw on? It's just a matter of knowing what you're capable of and equally knowing what you're not capable of. And if you can be confident in both of those, then you can say anything with conviction and rest on, uh, rest on your confidence. Thank you so much, Mitch. You're welcome. Well, Mitchell Hooper has every reason to be confident right now. Four and a half point lead heading into that final event. What do you expect to see as we head into the frame carry? Yeah, Mitch is going to be delighted with how things have kind of worked out. Real close now between Kieliszkowski and Trey Mitchell for that second place position. Knowing that uh, Kieliszkowski is the world record holder, Trey's going to be feeling the pressure. Definitely because Mateus is not only looking to win the comp or win the frame, but instead of we'll break his own world record on it. And, it, you know, if he comes out and wins it like he should, you know, it really, it's all on Trey and Hooper. It's, it's theirs to lose. If, if either one of them fumble and get too many guys between them, Mateus could slip in and, and grab this thing. You know, it's, it's not over. Yeah, a lot still needs to be decided as we head into the fifth and final event later this evening. We're going to step aside, hand things over to the Rogue Iron Game crew, Lauren Smith and Dr. Bill Crawford coming up here in a little bit. So stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues here from Columbus, Ohio.